All right. Praise the Lord. Uh, Julius Caesar won. July 1. How about that? Now, the 3rd of July is the full moon. The 3rd of July is the first day of the third month, Savan, on God's calendar. Hey guys, go with God on this. Go with God on this, all of this. Go with God on all of this, okay? Everything. Don't play around. Don't study the stars and study the numbers and study scriptures that you take out of context. Go to the Bible code. Jesus Christ has been so gracious to straighten out all of our false doctrine and get all of the story right. Man, Bondo has showed up here and he's got the Bible codes unsealed book. It's a free book, guys, a free ebook with all the Bible codes in it. There's 406 he's got here that are published. Now, Sean has 2,300 Bible codes. 406 are published. He's going to include, I'm guessing, a bunch uh, into the book before the rapture. And then he'll come back and add a bunch after the rapture for the Jews. Because they desire, require a sign. So praise God. Thanks, Vondo. Download that ebook, guys. Praise God. This is the biggest gold, the biggest prize on earth from heaven at this time. And, and for you to just to be blasé about it shows your heart, shows your, your faithlessness. Jesus, please ask the questions. Will I find faith when I come? Please have faith. Vondo says, pray for Johnny Boy that the Holy Spirit will give him messages that we need to hear every night. Praise God from the Word of God. Thank you for that prayer, and uh, pray for Sean. He includes the prayer request for Sean, the PayPal link, take care of God's guy. Amen. Vano says, please like and share these nightly Bible studies. Please. Guys, if you knew what you had here, okay, in these Bible codes, I, 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 I pray that your fervor would be greater than it is. The share count is just so sad. How many shares... The whole world should be getting this. Amen. Sean's put up a new one. I like right now uh, the likes and loves, 19. <laughs> and the uh, comment, 7. You know, July. July 19. I see it right here in front of me, guys. 7, 19. From a code that was posted two hours ago. I love it. Amen. So... Tomorrow is, uh, or the 3rd, the 3rd of July is going to be the full moon. And you know what's going to happen? All these fireworks enthusiasts are going to be complaining and whining and mad that, you know, there's a full moon. They like their lights offered to Satan a whole lot more than, you know, Jesus offering his light to us, brightening the darkness, removing the darkness with the full moon saying, hey, a new month is here getting closer to the rapture. Amen? And they're not so excited because, you know, a new month happened to them two days earlier than that. And it's their seventh month, not God's third. And, and, and. Oh, please hear what we're saying, man. Get on God's page. You're about to see him face to face, man. You're about to see him face to face. And this new code is a doozy. Hey, I've, I've talking to, to one of our friends, one of our guys who listens to us regularly. And, uh, He's opened up to me. He says, man, I got OCD. Things are bad. It just hounds me. Uh, it thought My thoughts always race. Am I lost? Am I not a believer? And he says, I know I am. I know I am. Guys, OCD, listen to me, is a gift from God. Okay? But Satan is the one who names it OCD. So you got to take what you got. If you're one of these with OCD and, this, and Satan runs wild with your thoughts, and you redeclare everything. That's what God told us. He said, be sure to take into ca captivity, captivity, take them captive, every thought that dare acknowledge itself against God and bring it into obedience under the obedience of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Take your thoughts captive, guys. Don't let them take you captive. So how is OCD a blessing? Well, God calls it fervor. Satan calls it OCD. In Satan's OCD, and guys, here, here, here's the problem. If you are being stressed out 
and yanked by your OCD and your thoughts running wild, you have allowed yourself to link up in the frequency of a demon and somehow he has beguiled you and not let you know that he's, he has hooked up to your mind and your mind is in the same freak zone as his and he is your thought pattern and you've allowed him to become your operating system. And so you got to recognize that as a believer, say, I will not have a devil, the doc it's doctrine of demons. I will not have that as my operating system. I want you to be my operating system, Lord. And instead of being all tweaked out and geeked out and freaked out and running crazy with my thoughts and the devil calling it OCD, you've given me a gift called fervor for you. And in my fervor for you, I want your joy and peace to overwhelm my mind and my thoughts. When my mind is racing, I want it to be a controlled race. Um, on your mark, get set. We're running a 100-yard dash. Go! And boom, everybody takes off. And one guy out there in lane seven starts running up, up into the stands and runs up the stairs. Oh, he's running so fast. He's running with strength. He's running with vigor, but he's out of his lane. He's out of his race. He's disqualified. You can't just run. You got to run your race. You got to stay in your lane. You got to stay between the lines, okay? And the lines is God's scripture. And the lines is God's peace, his Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit on one side, his word on the other. And of course, his Holy Spirit's on both sides, the words on both sides of you, okay? He's our shield and our buckler. And you can't let the devil run you nutty, okay? You take your thoughts into captivity unto the obedience of Christ. And all these thoughts that dare exalt themselves against what God says, against his word, these are demonic thoughts. You've allowed yourself into a habit of letting, letting yourself link up with the devil and devil theology and the doctrine of Satan. A demon is your operating system. The flesh. Your flesh was hooked up to that. Okay? So you got to recognize it. You got to depeg, unplug from your flesh and say, Lord, we're plugging into you. And recognize, uh, don't let them mingle themselves, the devil's thoughts and the word of God. Okay? You got to understand the devil's thoughts are the devil's thoughts and, and stop and recognize it. And remember, the fruit of the Spirit is what will be overwhelming in your life when you do what Bondo says here. Read the Word of God in humongous chunks. This will keep you focused on Jehovah, and His Word will be refreshing to your mind. And listen, everybody listen to me. Listen to the old hymns all day long. Shut your radio off. Get rid of Sirius. You don't need Sirius for this. Okay, You don't need the devil for this one. Listen to the old school Bible hymns that preach the Bible. And you'll sing it. You'll wake up in the morning singing those songs. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And you'll be singing that all day long. I mean, come on, really? As opposed to what the devil's putting in your head? So God has given us a gift, and, and there is a certain group of us, the watchmen, the preachers, who have been given an extra portion of automatic fervency. So the devil has stolen that, and he has redirected it to things of the world, things of the flesh, things that oppose God and his word, and that becomes OCD and stress and pain. And it was Satan who named it OCD. Uh, your fervency is OCD. You, you got to quit thinking about Jesus so much. When Paul and Peter told us our goal is to where we have every thought thinking about Jesus all the time. So if you're not thinking about Jesus all the time, you're dis disobedient to the Holy Spirit of God, disobedient to the word, disobedient to what the apostles taught us in the beginning. And you've now taken on a new Jesus and a new way to include your fun and your secularism in, you know, the ways of heaven until we get there. I got to kill some time till I get there. Time is a gift that God has given you. He told you to redeem it. Make every minute count for him for the kingdom. Now, are you freaking on the wrong frequency? Everybody does this. Not just the OCDers, but everybody who opposes scripture, who opposes the word. Uh, Vano says, who came up with OCD? As the 20th century opened, both Pierre Janet and Sigmund Freud, they are the ones who come up with this thing, and they are the ones who coined it. Because this guy thinks way too much about Jesus. He's a nut. It's a disorder. When God gave it to you to keep in order, 
God does everything decently and in order, and the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. So the result of our fervency ought to be incredible delight. So the devil gets in there, and he captivates our fervency for the Lord, and we freak up with the devil. We get on his frequency and start listening to lies, and we know there's this dichotomy going on in us. I don't really believe that, but why am I thinking that? And so focus on the Lord. Focus on the Lord. Be orderly. Do all things decently and in order. Do all things for God. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all to the glory of God. Let the word of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. 24-7, and all the nanoseconds involved in that. Do not let the devil steal your glory, the glory of God. Do not let him steal your crowns, okay? Hey, man, we got to look at this new Bible code that Sean put up today. And before we get to that Bible code, hey, Jeff Fiesel, you are a devil Judas bastard. Quit your manipulating Quit acting all holy and like you're truly saved. You're a lost devil as the, of the Catholic variety. Okay? Quit manipulating. Quit lying. Quit using your money to get to people. We rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible codes have come against you. You're a dead man in the eyes of God. You're a loser. You're a wicked man. You're a son of the devil. Okay? And the Bible codes do not change for you. I know Glazerson says they do, but he's a satanic Kabbalist. The word of God is the same yesterday because he is. Yesterday, today, and forever, you will not change the word of God. The word of God is settled and forever settled in heaven. Okay? So you and your ilk, leave us alone. Leave Sean alone and quit bugging him, man. And all you devils and all your idiot people who follow you as your little disciples. And if any of you people, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to find out. If any of you are still following Jeff Fiesel, and I am going to block you. you if you're my friend and his, you're blocked because you're a friend of the devil, dude. And you have no discernment. You're a retard. Okay? All right. Let's get on with this new Bible code. It's awesome. It's awesome. Uh, Sean, is Moses and Elijah. The Bible codes have said this over and over. And you people who don't fear him like that, who don't reverence him like that, you are a fool. God knows your heart. And you will be ashamed at the judgment seat of Christ if you're saved. Okay? If you're saved, you better learn who the men of God are and fear them. You do not fear Isaiah if you don't read him. You don't reverence Jeremiah if you don't read him with a fervor and a passion. Fervor, we use that word again. Habakkuk, you do not fear that man as a prophet of God who has things to say for you right now to you right now. You don't fear him if you don't read him. We're calling you to fear all the prophets, the men of God, and this one Sean Mitchell, who is this end-time prophet guiding you in all truth. If you'll read these Bible codes, it'll get your doctrine right there, preachers, you stupid, foolish preachers. Amir Safadi in his post today. He, he blasted this thing out to the world. Some people think that the uh, Antichrist is going to be Muslim. I don't. I just don't think he is. I think he's going to be white European. Um, he's a black American and he's Muslim. Raised Muslim, loves Muslim. I the call to prayer. He thinks that's the most beautiful sound that I just made. I think it sucks. It's irritating. You ever been in one of them countries where they holler out six times through the night while you're trying to sleep and they got the speakers right outside your hotel? You ever, you ever done that? Miserable. But he calls it blessed because Satan likes disorder and dysfunction. The Lord's all about, all about order and calm. It was the Lord Jesus Christ who gave us sleep. We're to sleep in peace at night, and they disturb your sleep six times a night to holler out that call to prayer. It's, it's a satanic scheme. And Amir is saying, oh, I just don't believe it is him. And one of our dear friends responded to him and said, dude, we have 120 Bible codes that say it's Barack Obama. Will you please get in line with the Bible code? And he won't. He's got too many books to sell. All those guys are like that, and God is living. You need to listen to Sean Mitchell and these Bible codes right here.
These are the only ones who got. And listen to what God says about him today in today's Bible code. Vondo has put it up here. Alicia, hi, family. Fresh manna today, praise God. And, and we will answer your question here in a second by God's grace when we get to it, okay? She had asked a wonderful question today. She's been in vacation Bible school and has missed our Bible studies and was wondering about something we said concerning the Nibiru, and we should get to that tonight. All right, praise God. This is from two hours ago. Fresh manna from heaven. The fire has fallen. The thunder has sounded. The code of Mitchell found in the book of Exodus, you know, Exiting earth, exiting sin, to the promised land, to heaven. That's a, that's a great book. You don't fear God if you don't fear Moses. Sean's great, 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 great granddaddy and read it. All you New Testament only folk. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and that's his word. But fools despise wisdom and instruction, knowledge and instruction. You're a fool if you don't read the Bible. A fool. The Code of Mitchell is found in the book of Exodus. It has an ELS of 718, meaning July 18th, which is Sean's birthday. It identifies him as the lampstand. Moses, Elijah, they're the lampstands. The olive trees, they're the oil and the lamp. The, the light and the uh, candlestick itself. God's going to use them to make it work. Sean and the other guy whom the Lord Jesus Christ will rescue at the rapture. So it sounds like Sh Sean is going to be raptured. It seems from the Bible codes that Sean has seen that the other guy is part of the living body of Christ, the part of the bride of Christ who will be raptured as well. But Sean is our example, and God is referring to him as he uncovers these codes because only Sean can un uncover them. He is the only guy qualified to wear the ephod of God and to come near Everybody else is told you stay away from my mountain. Jonathan Matthew Wright, I'm going to come near the mountain. I'm going to make me some codes. I'm going to I'm going to defame God. I'm going to speak lies instead of truth. Sean has many codes and one of those codes has Jonathan Matthew Wright's name going through here right and on one side it's connected to sin and the other it's connected to Satan and it's a Bible code writer Bible code. Speaking of Eliyahu Rips, the guy that made it, Sean himself, this guy. Sean said, you will not find Jonathan Wright's full name in any code in the Old Testament, anywhere. He is that blasphemous and he has entered the mountain going to do Bible codes and you don't belong there, gay. You don't belong there, Cora. You better back down. God's going to open up earth and swallow you whole and you and Jeff can kiss each other. Sean says, my birthday, and it identifies me. We're looking at this new Bible code that Sean just put up two hours ago. Vondo has put the link right here. Click on it. Look at the picture. Elijah and Moses, uh, Sean is the identifier of these guys, whom the Lord Jesus Christ will rescue at the rapture among the rest of his children, you and I. He's the representative of us. Jesus Christ is about to rescue all of us. So to rescue us from what? Evil and present danger. Okay, it's right here. The submarine left port several days ago with a new load of these torpedoes, these Poseidons. And they were doing a test uh, run without a nuclear warhead. So they had all their equipment go out there. And what's the possibility of another submarine firing that? And they have still have all six of theirs on their boat. And they all, every, all the attention was over here, and then they just released those six, and those six are going to their pre-described locations, predetermined, and will sit there until they're ready, along with the other six and the other six that they've already dropped off. This is going to be one big doozy of a day, guys, and Jesus Christ is going to rescue Sean, Moses, and Elijah, along with the rest of us. Whom the Lord Jesus Christ will rescue at the rapture among the rest of his children. Exodus 19, 19, 2, 19. 2 is separation. 2 is a picture of the rapture. Two different groups, them and us. All the way through Thessalonians, remember they and us? Us and them? Okay? Exodus, and you know, I mean the name itself, Exodus. We're exiting this place. We're going to be separated from the rest of y'all. 
19, well, just put that in your back of your memory banks there, is a beautiful picture of the day of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's the rapture, when he will descend to the clouds and call us up to the mountain of God. Amen. That's right here, guys. Guys, guys, if you knew what time it was, if you knew what time it was, you would flush everything else and you would be so serious. And familiarize yourself with these Bible codes so your thinking is in line with God and not the devil. Okay? Get your doctrine straight. That means get right with God with these Bible codes. Okay, we're going to read this passage because it's vital. It's 14 verses. Exodus 19, verses 10 to 23. What? Okay, so we got Exodus. That's two. That's a rapture, right? And then we got 19. That's a day that the Lord has really shown us, which is what? What's that next number? 10, which is 10 days after? And 23? Oh, my goodness. Alicia says, I was telling Sean earlier that eight children accepted Jesus for salvation at VBS this week. Even children can understand the simple gospel. What is the simple gospel? The death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ on your behalf. He took all the rage, the anger, the wrath, the judgment of the Father upon him to spare you from it. Do you believe that? You need to believe that because Jesus took care of the sin issue. Now it's a matter of a belief issue, a righteousness issue, because you can't go to heaven without righteousness. And you can't go to heaven and have that righteousness without believing the story of the death, burial, and resurrection where Jesus traded places with you. And he who knew no sin became sin so you could become righteous. Do you like that trade-off? Will you believe today? Believe. Place yourself in the story. I am a sinful individual in desperate need of a Savior. And Jesus Christ, who is God, is the only one who could save me because it's God's perfection that is required to make it to heaven. Boy, that leaves everybody out. And then we hear this preacher preach the death, burial, and resurrection. He came here to take care of your sin issue and to become your sin and to take it as far as the east is from the west from you, all of them, even the ones you haven't committed yet. He's already taken care of those. Will you believe that? If you'll believe that, that Jesus once saves, always saves you, when you believe that, that, that you're in desperate need of a Savior and you've placed yourself in that place, He'll save you. When you believe, He infuses His righteousness in you and you're good to go. The Holy Spirit Himself has come inside of you to, to reassure you that you're saved, that God loves you that much and He wants you saved and He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Will you believe that? Children do. Yeah, you know, the kids, they believe that. Alicia's been with them all week and she knows. We encourage you to believe, okay? You don't have much time left. So we're going to read this passage here in Exodus 19. It is such a picture of the rapture. You got to listen to this. And also a picture of the second coming, guys. Okay? When all eyes will see him and they'll see the fire and the smoke burning on the mountain. Okay? We're just, we have a seven-year head start of them. Okay, they're going to see everything and believe everything that we see and believe, but they're going to be seven years late on it. They will have to have it endured seven years of hell to get to their point, and you and I have already endured our hell, and we're just waiting for Jesus to come get us. Amen? Amen. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go ye to the people and sanctify them. Number two, set them apart. Make them separate from the rest of everybody. That's what the word sanctify means. And when Jesus saved you, he sanctified you. He pulled you out of the world and the world's ways and set you over there with him in a special place. You're a peculiar people. You're set apart. You're a holy nation. And then he says, now live in that sanctification. Live in that holiness. Okay? Sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day. So be ready on the third day. Now, what does that mean, guys? When you read Micah, the third day, Jesus, the day he died and the day he ascended was 1,993 years ago. There's going to be a seven-year period where he purifies the earth, and you and I are just going to have a ball, a blast at the marriage supper of the Lamb in heaven. Okay, it's going to be awesome. And then we're all going to come back, and that'll be at the end of two days, 2,000 years. A thousand years is as a day to the Lord, and a day is as a thousand years. So it will be after one and two days, and he will set up his shop, his kingdom, on the third day. That's what that means, the millennium, which is the end of the 6,000th year. Okay, The third day since his creation, I mean since his resurrection and his ascension. 
And he ascended on day 40, guys. This is vital that you do not believe very awe and all those guys that are saying that now, okay? Jesus ascended on the 40th day of the count from the, from the day he rose from the dead. He, they counted 40 days and he ascended to heaven and told all those people, will you quit gazing at us? We're not a gazing stock. Get to work. Quit looking. Quit. So those are the most annoying people to me at work are the nosy ones. They just want to be nosy and, and be just spend their time being nosy instead of working. It's like, why don't you pick up the other end of that and help me out, man? Instead of coming over here to see what I'm doing, you know? And, and that's what these angels said. Quit staring up here. Get to work, you men of Galilee. So after the third day, the Lord says, I'm going to come down in the sight of all the people. Now, now th this is a picture also at the second coming. All I shall see him. Okay, but, but you and I know about the mystery church. So we back up seven years, and this is going to be true for us. All believing eyes will see him then, not all eyes. And at the end, all, it'll again be all believing eyes will see him and unbelieving eyes. And he'll come kill everybody who has unbelieving eyes. He's going to kill all them, and then the people who had believing eyes to see him are going to rejoice, and there will be a banquet set up for them after they've endured their seven years of hell. Amen? So the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. This is Moses talking to all the people, God talking to Moses, and then Moses sharing it with all the people. That's how it works. God talks to Sean, and Sean shares it with us. Are you going to believe, or are you just going to come near the mountain and not care what God said? That mountain looks pretty cool. I'm going to go over and touch it. Wet paint. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves that you do not go up into the mountain or touch the border of it. John, Jonathan Matthew writing all these fake Bible coders. Oh, let me try it. Oh, let, I'm a decoder. Oh, let me try it. And they're coming to touch the mountain. God said, you stay away from that. I got one guy. One guy who's called to do that. Vando says, man, the wicked are going to be looking for those aliens, a lie. That's what they're doing. They're being set up. They've been set up, guys. Oh, amen. And they've been so so distracted that when the when the trigger, when the bad stuff happens, they're going to need somebody to tell them which way do I go. Okay, sector twelve. Okay, I'll go to sector twelve, and they'll do exactly what they're told, man. Take heed to yourselves that you do not go up to the mount or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mount shall be surely put to death. Do not touch the things of God that you should not be touching. You stay in your lane and you make your calling and your election sure and you do that and quit lusting and desiring after other people's calls and their gifts. Quit it. That's God's to do. That's God's gift to give. You trust him with it and you love it. Whoever comes close, I'm going to put to death. There shall not a hand touch this mountain, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. God doesn't miss with his arrows. Okay? He knows his targets. We saw that last night. He knows his targets. He's going to kill every one of them here real soon. Very soon. Before the month end, probably. That's what everything's looking to point to. And that's what this code is, 718. It's revealing to us which Sean Mitchell this is. It's the one who was born on July 18th. The Moses Elijah one. And we have tons of Bible codes saying that that's him. And God triangulates over and over and over to prove to the world because the Jews require a sign. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people. So this was God telling him all this. I'm giving you rules. You tell these people that. After the third day, I'm going to come see them. And then, boom, don't you dare come near this mountain. I'll kill you. I will kill you if you come near my holiness. Okay? You better learn to listen to my word. And anything outside my word is unholy. But it seems nice. It seems good. Hey, guys, every one of you that's going to celebrate the 4th of July, you are unholy against the living God because you're not familiar with him. You don't know his heart. You don't know what the 4th of July is about. You don't know why that day exists. You don't know why they started it and for whom the Declaration of Independence was truly written for. It wasn't written including Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It excluded him. And they built a country like Babylon to wall God out. We can do all this, have freedom, do all this stuff without God. And look, Trump comes along and it's without Jesus Christ. It's mega ritual. He's a mega witch. And he's all one of them, guys. So God sends the message to Moses while he was up in the mountain. Moses comes down and he relays the message. Uh, 
where did it get to? And Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people, just like God said. And they washed their clothes, and he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. That means don't have any sexual givings or misgivings. You stay pure. We're, we're, we're dedicating this moment unto the Lord God alone. We're focusing on him. That's what fasting is. And when you fast, you, you uh, what did Paul say? Uh, don't withhold your body from your spouse. And you spouses that withhold your body from your spouse are wicked. You oppose God. But it says, but you come together in agreement if you're going to fast and say, uh, we want to hear from the Lord. We're not going to feed our flesh. Th then, then it's fine. Once you've agreed upon withholding each other's bodies from each other, but you people who withhold your body from your spouse are wicked against God because you made a vow to your spouse to be one flesh and your body doesn't belong to you. It belongs to your partner and your partner's body doesn't belong to them. It belongs to you in sanctified, holy matrimony. And this whole conversation we're having is about holiness and your whole life. That's a conversation. Your whole life should be about holiness and doing the right thing because God is your God and you fear him and you've heard him speak from the mountain and you're going to obey it down here on earth. Amen. And sanctify the people, and they washed their clothes, and, uh, and he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day, come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet, the voice of the trumpet. You know, Ali asked us that question the other night. It's God's voice. It's God's voice, the voice of the trumpet. It's God's voice speaking. Hmm. Exceedingly loud, that all the people in the camp, they trembled, and Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet God. Hey, God, here's the peop people. This is God. This is Jehovah. This is I am that I am. This is yod vav -Heh. And they met him for the first time. Moses had been meeting with him. And now he, the people got to meet the Lord. Aren't you grateful for that? Remember your meeting with him? And you were introduced and you believed? Amen. Because the Lord descended upon the fire and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. There was an earthquake. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by voice, by voice, by voice. That's the trump of God. The first one is this one. The last one will be our rapture call. That's why this picture is so beautiful, guys, for the rapture. Moses going up, and he's, uh, Sean is our representative, going up. And we're all going to be going up too, okay? And everybody else has been told, don't you come near the mountain. All of us have been called up who are in Christ Jesus. Amen? And Sean is our rep representative. He's our ambassador, the Moses Elijah character. So as it is with him, it will be with us. Amen? Now, that's a beautiful thing, man. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on top of the mount, and the Lord called Moses up. So Jesus is going to descend from heaven to the clouds, and we're going to be called up. This is that picture, guys, at the last trump, the voice of God. And the Lord said unto Moses, go down, charge the people. That means preach to the people, challenge the people. You tell those people, lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze and many will perish. Don't you break my rules. I've set the bounds. I'm holy. Get away from me. Okay. And let the priests also, which come near to the Lord, sanctify themselves, lest the Lord break through upon them and annihilate them, man. Kill them quickly. God hates the profane. He hates average. He, he, he set you apart to be holy. Live holy, will you? Live in obedience. Live according to the word. They need to be sanctified too, lest the Lord break through upon them. And Moses said unto the Lord, the people cannot come to Mount Sinai, for you've told them not to come. You've set boundaries. And sanctified it. So God told Moses something and Moses remembered it and lived accordingly. You know, to the word, the word of God became his word, became his rule book. That should be all of us. Okay. Now let's look at this verse here in Exodus 20 verses 18 and 19. 18 and 19. Exodus. Huh? All right. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and they stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, oh, we need you to speak to us and we'll listen to what you say. We'll listen to the preacher, but don't let God speak to us lest we die. And they said, okay. And Moses spoke to him and they wouldn't listen. Bunch of liars. Jeff Fiesel, you lying, 
sack of feces. Exodus 24, verses 15 to 18. And Moses went up to the mountain, and a cloud covered the mountain, and the glory of the Lord abode up on the Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day, this is very important, because Sean has learned some things about the day of the rapture. Okay? And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud, and the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire upon the top of the mountain in the eyes of all the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the, mid, the mid, middle of, the midst of the cloud, and got him up to the mountain. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. Listen to that. We got the number seven, and we got 40 days and 40 nights. All right. And then Hosea, this is that Hosea. I said Micah a second ago. It's Hosea. Hosea 6.2. And after two days, he will revive us. That, that's Israel. Okay, Israel killed Jesus, and he was dead to them for two days, and therefore they became dead to him, partially blind, and most of them have gone to hell for the last 2,000 years because they won't believe that Jesus is their Messiah. That's how you get to heaven. You believe the truth of his death, burial, and resurrection, and when you believe that and you place yourself in the story, he infuses you with his righteousness, and every one of those get to go to heaven. But the Jews wouldn't do it. But after two days, after, at the end of the tribulation, Remember that two days after the ascension, which will be the year 2030. He ascended in A.D. 30. So two days, 2,000 years later, will be when the children of Israel will be revived and raised up in his sight. And uh, we shall live in his sight. Now, what, what does that have to do with the rapture? Maybe the third day of our week is actually the seventh day of God's. We know everything else is jacked up, right? Okay, just... Make some notes. All right, here's the code. Translation. Mitchell, Sean Mitchell, is the lampstand with the lamp oil. So he's both the olive tree, he's the olive, the light, and the menorah. Okay? The lampstands and the oil that fires the lampstands. Mitchell is a lampstand with the lamp oil who points out the thunder. The Bible codes. The Bible codes are the seven thunders. So God is narrowing down, hmm, which Sean Mitchell is this? Oh, the one born on July 18th, the one who's my lampstand, the one who's my lamp oil, and the one who's brought the thunder. Can anybody guess who that one is? I love God. He clarifies it, and he's using this as a sign for the Jews to believe that we all said this, I preach this, and uh, Lindy and George and whomever else will write on it. Now, we did it on this side of the rapture as a sign. Okay? The code of Mitchell is broken. He broke the code. Sean broke the code. He figured out God's lingo in God's language. Amen? His dialect. His word in his dialect. Moses, Elijah, to the throne of Jehovah. This is the thundering voice of God that come up hither. The trump of God is that thunder. Okay? Then there's the seven thunders, which is the word of God. Amen? And it says this. Moses, Elijah, to the throne of God for the thunder. Now, guys, you've got to picture. You've got to picture the rapture. We're going to get there. And God, God is all about giving information. He's all about informing everybody of what's about to happen. That's why he sends prophets along. Well, he's going to be doing that to us in heaven. He's going to be disclosing the next plans to us in heaven. He's going to call Sean Mitchell and the other guy forward. And they're going to be debriefing in heaven their plan, the Bible code, what's there, the seventh thunder. We'll probably get to hear it there in the game plan, okay? Whatever else is there. Elijah, Moses and Elijah, to the throne of Jehovah for the thunder. Jesus, Yeshua, rescues the lampstand Mitchell. And remember, he represents us on the seventh day. So whatever day we are raptured on, that will be a sign to all the Jews that this is your Sabbath day from now on. Remember, there, there was a change. When Jesus rose from the dead, it was on the first day, and the church age was born, and we worship him in spirit and truth every day of the week, but we meet together on the first day, and on the first day of the week, we lay by our offerings and tithes to take care of the poor, the needy, the widows, the hungry, okay? Those in need. That's the command. So that's why we've always gone and met together on Sundays. 
the first day of the week. Okay? Now God is going to reset the clock because that's what God does. Uh, Gary says, man, I was having a rough day and God showed me a 726. God is so comforting. The God of all comfort. Praise the Lord. He loves us so much. Garris, I want to talk to you after the Bible study, bro. Okay? He called me early today, and I was in the middle of a mess, and we were in the middle of uh, driving uh, out of state, and I had no phone service, and I wanted to call you and talk to you. And so if, you're will if you can talk tonight after the Bible study, let's do that, bro. Got to take care of our brothers and sisters. Thank God for God being there and showing us a 726. God is so comforting and the God of all comfort. Praise the Lord. He loves us so much. Amen. I, I do praise him, brother. I praise God for you and your, and your ministry, your willingness, and your edification to the rest of us. All right. So we're looking at this brand new code. Moses and Elijah to the throne of Jehovah for the thunder. Yeshua rescues the lampstand. Mitchell on the seventh day, the appointed time. The voice of the trumpet is Jehovah. Oh, what? Yep, no more questioning, guys. What is that trump? What is the last trump? The voice of Jehovah. It says so in this Bible code. Let's read this Bible code together. Well, let's look at Exodus 19, 11. And be ready against the third day. For the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. So right now, what do we got? Our first day is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Okay? Today is July 1st, Saturday. So, 2nd, 3rd, 4th. Two weeks from today will be the 18th, or, or that day, uh, from that, well, let's see here. Today, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. One, two, three, four. Okay? Tuesday. Tuesday. Two weeks from Tuesday is going to be on a Tuesday. That's the third day. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Be ready against the third day. That's Sean's birthday. The 18th. Be ready against that third day. Y'all be ready then. Okay? Be ready. I don't know what that means, but be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Come the 18th. Okay? Let's look at that translation again. Oh, Mitchell is the lampstand. Y'all believe that? You had better believe that, and it had better be surreal to you that you are privileged to be part of this gang, that God has opened your eyes to it and revealed it to you and even presented it to you, unbelievers. You scoffers. You, you'll, you'll know. Be ready against that third day. That third day right now to us is a Tuesday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, which God may call the seventh day. Because he's going to rapture us on the seventh day, his seventh day. And this will be a sign to all the Jews. Here's my calendar correction. This is the seventh day. We already know what day of the month it is. We just don't know which day of the week it is. Okay? So the third day might become that seventh day. Is everybody tracking? What we call the third day now might necessarily be the seventh day or the sixth day if it happens on the 19th. Okay, just be ready on the 18th. Be ready at that third day of the week. Okay? Third day has a double blessing. That's it, guys. God did not bless the second day of creation. He blessed every day of creation except the second day. But he double blessed the third day. And that's why Jews, even today all around the world, get married on Tuesdays. Because it's a double blessing day of blessing. Married on a Tuesday. Okay. And some places it might be a Wednesday. In some places, places it might be a Tuesday. Because this big old world in 24 time zones. Amen. Everybody tracking? Just be ready against that third day, will you? All right. Good word, Vana. Mitchell is the lampstand with the lamp oil who points to the thunder. Both he points to the Bible code thunder and he points to the trumpet sound of God. He's pointing to the rapture. The code of Mitchell is broken. That is that thunder. Mitchell Elijah to the throne of Jehovah for the thunder. Yeshua rescues the lampstand Mitchell on the seventh day, the appointed time, the voice of the trumpet. Now, you guys remember, the 19th is 10 days 
after the 50th day. We count 50 days to the wheat harvest, and then we begin another 50-day count on that very day. The 9th of July is the end of the wheat, and it's the beginning, the same day, the beginning of the grapes. So you count 10 days. Somebody get this to bury y'all, will you? 10 is a big number to God. 40 is a huge number to God. Jesus ascended on day 40. We are counting to the day 50 and then another 10 to the night. Or, or, yeah, day 50 will be the 9th of July and another 10 will be the 19th of July. And you guys, when you see um, McKenzie's post every day about the count up, you got to see George's comments. Okay, you must always see his commentary there because he gives a, an amazing day count in there. And so if the 19th is 10 days after and we get raptured on that date and we're up there and Sean is in heaven for 40 days like Moses was. He's up in the mount 40 days being debriefed. We're all at the throne. We're all hearing the thunders of God. We're hearing his voice. We're, we've received our prizes, our awards, our assignments. The rejoicing has been heavy and thick. Meanwhile, there's 40 days of rain, 40 nights and 40 days of rain on the earth, destruction, turmoil. Remember that Noah? It rained 40 days and 40 nights. What if Sean's up in heaven, just like Moses and you know Noah, up on top of the water in the boat? while it's raining down fire and whatever's happening on earth, and they're getting their story, their lie, straight on their end, because their lie is crooked, but they've got to get people convinced of their crooked lie. And so we're up in heaven being debriefed, and then Sean comes down. After 40 days, you know what that is? That is the day of the wine festival. Right, George? He reminded me of that note in this Bible code. We go an extra 10 days, he's up 40 days and comes down on the 50th day. That's the day of the wine feast and the first day of the olive count. He's the olive, isn't he? Wouldn't that be kind of a neat timeline? Just track along. That's all we're saying. You read that Bible, study that Bible, be encouraged by that Bible. And I thank you for that reminder note, Brother George. It's August 27th. August 27th is the second 50-day count. And the first day count of the olive. Ring a ling a ding ding. Everybody for tracking? All right. Let's go to. Hey, let's look at that code from last night, Vondo. The the last one that we did. Uh. April 29th. Jesus came down into the world. Did everybody like that new Bible code? I love that new Bible code. Everybody counting with Mackenzie? Got eight days left on that count, and it will be the first sickle to the wheat, and then we count 10 more days to get us, be ready on the 18th. Be ready on that third day. Be looking. Maybe the 19th? Keep looking. We get raptured on that day. That's 10 days into the grapes, and 40 days later, the olive tree comes down on the first day of counting to the olives. Wouldn't that be interesting? Hmm. All right. So from last night, guys, you've got to look at this picture. Okay? you got to look at this picture when Bondo puts that link up there. April 29th, 2022. God has a perfect plan. Okay? And I want to make this note and then we'll go on from there. But when you see this, when the Jews see this, when they see this table, they're going to see a humongous code. They're going to see a cross. Boom, boom. And in that, they're going to see the, the 91 letters that went upward and the 69 letters that went this way. Everybody, here's your homework for tonight. Read Psalm 69 and Psalm 91. No. Okay? And in this, we're just going to look at, at the uh, translation, God's word in this passage to the Jews. It's to you and I, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, but... The first shall be last and the last shall be first. We were the last. We, we came later. The church came later. It was the Jews who came first, but they said no. So the last will be first. And we get this glory now, but they'll get the glory. And we praise God and we're praying for them to understand. Here's the translation of this big cross. 91, bam, by 69. Amen. George has put that up there. Psalm 69 and Psalm 91. Let's look at that translation. It is my mountain indeed. The heaven is the mountain. Moriah is the mountain. Mount Calvary 
is the mountain. And they see this big cross there. That's my mountain indeed. Where you crucified me, that's my mountain. That's where your father Abraham and Isaac were, and that's where my son was, whom ye crucified. It is my mountain indeed, and the light is enough. Look at that cross. Is that light in the way? Is that telling you what the story of God is? For he is the father of purpose. Behold my prince. He says, behold, this is my son. The king is saying that about his son, my prince. Who is, who is this Yeshua? Who is Jesus? Our master over death. Oh, my fever, my fever, my fever for him. You Get a fever for him. Get a fervor. Don't let the devil take, take the fervor and turn it into OCD wrongly with stress and with pain and with wicked thoughts. You have this fever, be a fervor. Amen. And you have a fervor for the fever, just like God had for him. Get the heart and the mind of God. And who, Jehovah, like their nation has ever killed their God? Nobody, but they killed Jehovah. The creator of the entire world and the chosen people, the elect Israel, killed their own God. And there's a cross. They killed him on a cross. Read Psalm 69 and Psalm 91. Who, who's killed their God like your nation killed you? Nobody. Ah, so he was smitten for my sake. You and I know that now, and we're going to go to heaven by believing that. The Jews will later believe it when Sean preaches to them and shows them this cross, this sign, and it was always there. And look at those amazing numbers. It's incredible. Look at those skips. And they're going to see it and they're going to believe. And they're going to hear this. Uh, so he was smitten for my sake. Hurry. Jesus is the lamb. Hurry and believe and take those steps. When you see Obama go into that temple to declare himself to be God, you run. You be in a hurry. A heap of ruins is a coming. Now, you and I have that here in America. A heap of ruins is coming. We believe we're going to get raptured because of that cross. That's the light. That's the mountain for us, man. Amen. Mount Calvary, the cross, the light of the gospel. Jesus, our light. He is our discerner. He is our revelation. And we believed and we're going to be saved. And the United States of America is going to become immediate mound of ruins. Then it's going to be coming their way beginning in three and a half years after that. And they're going to know it. They're going to have the United States as a sign because the Jews require signs and their family members were all killed. Most Jews will be killed the night of our rapture in the United States of America. And then these Jews will have that for an example and they're going to be like, what? A heap of ruins is coming your way just like it did, happened in the United States. Lament, you better cry over this. You will cry over this. He previously came to dwell. Jesus came here to dwell and be your king, and you guys killed him. Who is my lamp? Jesus. The Father's asking this. Who's my lamp? This is the Father's word in his dialect. Who's my lamp? Yeshua. It will be understood that Jesus was the Father's Messiah, and they're going to believe. Pray for Sean. Pray for him now. We know he's going to be, it's all going to be glory. Every move will be perfect. There will not be any missed moves in the glorified state. But we pray for the Jews who, to be saved. We pray, we pray for them. Lord, bring them all under the tutelage, under the teaching, under the word of those two crying out in the middle of Jerusalem. Lord God, save them. Save those people. We cry. We believe. All right. Let's look at another code. This one here is July 12, 2018. July 12, 2018. And it says it he contained, included all who are alive. So in essence, everybody who saves is going to be raptured. That's what this Bible code is saying. Do you like this Bible code so far? Everybody who saved will be raptured at the exact same time. When you see Sean Mitchell go missing, all believers will go missing at the same time. Hallelujah. And Vondo has put this link. Guys, guys, guys. You got to look at this link number here. Okay. 10. We keep talking about that 10. That 10 extra days, you know, makes up plus 40 equals 50. 10. At Pentecost, that's 153. 10 days extra at Pentecost will be on the 19th. I want you to look at this. Of July. Does everybody see that? This is in every one of these codes. 10, 153, 19, 7. 10 days extra in Pentecost will be the 19th of July. And then you have 
5 plus 9, that's 14. That'll be the rapture. Then you go backwards. 9, judgment. 5 and 7 is 12. Is that how we did that? Uh, 21. Oh, turn that into 21. The 5 plus 7 plus 9, okay, is 21. Vondo tells us there's nothing good about 21. 777 is there, va, 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 666, and it's going backwards. We got the rapture and the goodness going this way, and we got the judgment and Obama coming this way, and it ends with Obama. It says, when you're looking at this link number that he has just put up, go to the very right at that 975 coming from the right to the left. 975, that's 21, and it'll be given unto man, number six, who is Barack Obama, the man of perdition, 44. It's all right there, guys. Okay? I ain't making this up. It's right in front of your face. 10 days of 153 is the 19th of July. 14, rapture. Coming the other way, 21, judgment, judgment, judgment. Man of sin, Barack Obama, 44. Boom. Okay, now to the Bible code. Hey, is everybody glad they're all going to be raptured if you're saved? Don't, don't worry about being worthy to escape. All those guys who are praying worthy, being worthy to escape aren't saved. They're trusting in something else, man. You got to trust in the blood. You, you got to rest in Jesus Christ. Now, there's going to be a lot of them. You know, there's a lot of Satan's gotten into their minds and they've all, you know, so many have been deceived. But most of those people who are saying that aren't saved because they're not resting in Jesus Christ alone and understanding that when he saves you, he justifies you, he sanctifies you, and he glorifies you. It's all one package. You're the saved or you ain't. You're going to get raptured or you're lost. That's, that's your choices. Are you saved? Then you'll be raptured. Let's look at this. July 12, 2018. Here is a very comforting code from our Lord Jesus. The correct doctrine that Paul taught is in 1 Thessalonians 4.17. The rapture on the 17th. That's God's calendar. Just I'm just... Spitting out numbers there. That's all I'm looking at. It's numbers. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 is confirmed, and the partial rapture doctrine is refuted. So many people saying only the good ones get a go in the rapture. Those who are doing so many great things like I am right now. And I make these little videos, and so God's so impressed with me, and because I do that in fervor, and I make sure that I don't have ill will toward any human being, and I've made right every brother, and I'm walking in holiness, he's going to rapture me! Oh, that just makes God so sick. He's going to rapture you, because Jesus saved you. And Jesus has a three-part of his savings, and he's complete. He who starts the works faithful to complete it. Do you believe that? Jesus is worthy. We live in his worthiness. We have dived in. We are baptized in truth. Baptized in the spirit of his truth. Once saved, always saved. If truly saved, and you're totally saved. And this Bible code here from five years ago is at six. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, five years ago. This month, July. We're in July. This is from five years ago. This would have saved so many people headaches and sorrow and OCD, trouble, trauma moments. You'll just got to rest in Jesus, guys. Rest. Rest in Jesus. You rest in his truth. His truth is a pillow that you can rest on. And the partial rapture doctrine is absolutely lying right here. It's refuted. Also, some of us have been given visions, dreams from the Lord. This is Sean talking. Some of us have been given Dreams and visions from the Lord of this very moment, which I can also testify to. He's, he's had the dreams and visions. Genesis 28, 12. The secret of the stairs. Song of Solomon 2, 10 to 14. Uh, 2 and 14. What? 10. That 10 day. Okay. Back to the sermon. It paints a beautiful picture of the rapture of the church. Rise up. It says, similar to come up hither of Revelation 4, 1. You know, for the door, for rapture, hello. Both are referring to the rapture. When we will meet the Lord in the air, these stairs remind us of Jacob's ladder. Hallelujah. In Genesis 28, 12. Genesis 28, 12, 13. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it. Rapture dream, baby. Translation, it contained, it included all the rapture, is it. The rapture included all 
who are alive from Jehovah, who he's made alive. Who, he saved you. We were all dead in trespasses and sin. Dead men can't do anything. Dead men can't be counted worthy. Dead men can't even pray to be counted worthy. You must be made alive through belief. Amen? It included all who are alive in Jehovah and for us are the visions of he caught up. Know that my command will be with it and Jesus will lift all of you with the voice of the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Come up here. It's going to include all Christians. It contained all of them. The rapture included everybody. All the children who were, are in satanic homes are going to be raptured. All the children who are in Muslim homes will be raptured. All the children who are in disobedient Baptist homes will be raptured. All the children and all those who've been made alive in Jehovah. Amen? Let's look at another one. And hidden against her is the sign of the coming beast in fire. Okay? This is, a, this is Sean talking. He says, this is a very revealing code concerning Nibiru. And here we go. Alicia asked this question. And the sign of the dragon of Revelation 12, 3. It is highly possible that this was the cause of the three hours of darkness. And, and remember, this is 2017. This is from six years ago. Okay? This is six years ago. He, it was just not even, even two full years into Bible decoding. Okay? Now we've become more certain that this three-hour eclipse was Nibiru. Okay? It was the cause of the three hours of darkness during the crucifixion of Jesus. This would offer a very good explanation as to how the entire earth was darkened for this period of time. Notice how the terms Nibiru, signs, and also, and also a fiery dragon pass through Luke 23, 43, 44, what? Three, the third month, Luke, Luke is th third month of 23 and 44. When Obama takes the reins, that is what that verse is saying right there. It's extremely significant to see especially Nibiru and the signs appearing at the same skip of the main terms. The code also reveals that the sign of Nibiru is a representation of the fall of Satan and the rise of the son of perdition. This code describes the events of Revelation 12. And we read Revelation 12 the last three or four days. Read that for yourself, okay? The code, the translation. This, this is huge, guys, what's here, okay? In this small little table. Bondo, what is this skip? Oh, there it is. 41,327. 41,327. 41,327. Getting us this line. And hidden against her is the sign of the coming beast and fire. That's a cohesive, awesome, wonderful sentence to me from six years ago. God talking to us in his lingo. Here's the translation. By The code is by Sean Mitchell, and the voice is God. Speaking to our hearts, those who believe, and everybody will believe. Everybody in hell will believe. Okay. And hidden against her is the sign of the coming beast and fire, and the seven stars from the dragon, we believe, well, there's seven planets here in this system of Nibiru. And the seven stars from the dragon, blood and fire. Now, we talked about this last night, and this was the question. The wicked, satanic cult followers of Nibiru believe that this orbit is only on every 3,600 years. And they have believed that lie. So it was 3,600 years ago since Nibiru last got here. That's a lie. We know that because of the Bible. The orbit is actually on a five to 600 year orbit when you see the events in Scripture. The Great Flood, Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? They're all on these 500 year skips. All the way up through, um, what else have we got? We got Jericho falling down, the walls falling down. We've got... Uh, Hezekiah, the sundial, going back 10 degrees. All these were on five to 600 year increments. And sometimes the orbit, it'll go out farther and then come in. And the next time it won't go out so far. It's in a big oval. This orbit of Nibiru, this planetary system, it's God's judgment system coming in around the earth. And so every time God is ready to judge, he brings this thing in. Well, we mentioned the Mayans last night. We mentioned the Mayans. And where did they go? That was about, you know, five to six hundred years ago. 
And the Catholic Church sent in their people to invent the story because the Catholic Church is wiping out the entire history of this planet to make their lie real. And the Pope is on board with this 3,600-year orbit and not the every five to 600-year orbit. God's judgment system, his fire, his dragon. Okay? And so what, what were the Mayans doing? I mean, gallons, millions of gallons of blood they were pouring out, and they were pouring it out daily, every day. And the Bible says that God's going to send down these 70 pound hailstones mingled with fire and blood. Well, where does that blood come from? Is it the blood of animals being killed along the way? Uh, maybe it's chimera who live on different planets. God's going to just kill them on the way here. Okay. Also, iron oxide. It can be referred to as blood. When iron oxide hits a river, it looks like it's turned to blood and it's poisonous. It's, it's toxic. It's not to be drank. Okay. So we, we made this suggestion last night that where did this blood come from? Probably from the other judgments. As this, this thing came around, it's a magnet, and blood is filled with iron. And iron blood will stick to a powerful electromagnetic magnet. Okay, And we, we said that might be a possibility that from God's previous judgments, this thing has sucked up. Yeah, amen, Vondo. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church, they know what's going on. They're using that Lucifer telescope down there at Mount Graham in Arizona. They've been watching this thing come in. It's a binocular telescope, and it has this Lucifer infrared filter in there where they can see what you and I cannot see with our naked eyes and what any other telescope cannot see. And so they're using this Lucifer filter in this telescope to see Nibiru, and they've been watching it come in for all these years. They know what's happening. They're hiding the story, and they're hiding the demonic side of the story because they're in league with the devil, and they're turning it all into space aliens from outer space. So this blood that comes around uh, will probably be literal blood from previous judgments that were sucked up into this thing. Remember, God said, Cain, your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. God knows where every molecule is, dried, living, wet. It, it doesn't matter to him. He's going to revive all that. All these people who were killed in uh, gladiators, all the Christians who believed, they were eaten by animals. God knows where their DNA is, and those bodies will be resurrected, even those that have been digested and gone through lions and tigers and beasts. Okay, The same way with this blood is what we think. Uh it could be literal blood. It could be just referring to iron oxide. But we think it's literal blood. And where did this blood come from was the question that Vondo asked last night to get our to get our minds thinking and to get everybody considering it. And probably from previous judgments, every five to six hundred years as it comes by. What happened to these Mayans, guys? They were doing rocket science. We have we have clay tablets of them doing rocket science, perfected rocket science. We have we know that they were doing brain surgery, successful brain surgery, blood transfusions, things like that. How does that just disappear? We believe God judged them for all the innocent blood they were destroying, and the story was covered up. Okay? And it went down way south of us in Mexico and the Yucatan Peninsula and all that. And now God's coming farther north with it to take out... All of North America. Last time it was the southern portions of North America. This time it'll be the northern portions, United States and Canada, that he judges first with this system, and then he's going to judge the entire world with it this time. Uh, the orbit's going to do its thing. It's going to freak them all out. Okay. All right, guys. Hey, why don't we call it a night? Pray for Sean. Uh, let's read this passage here in Luke 23, 44 and 45. Guys, just look at this reference, okay? Before you even read the verse, Luke is three. That's the third month of Savan, of the year 23. We're going to see 44, Barack Obama, face off with 45, Sean Mitchell. What? Am I making this up? All right. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole face of the earth. Until the ninth hour, and the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst of it. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, this is Luke 21, 24, and shall be led away captive to all the nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. And Sean will be down there preaching that whole time the Gentiles are stomping all over this place.
And he'll be warning about it. And Barack Obama ain't your buddy. He ain't your buddy. He ain't your buddy. He's a liar. He's the devil. And that Pope over there is a scumbag. And the Pope and Obama, Sean and the other guy are going to be a thorn in their side. Amen. Alicia says, thank you for explaining to Beru. Definitely wasn't taught in church. Amen. Did that help you? That, that, that's what we see in the screen. Yeah, it wasn't taught. We got all these destructions happening on, you know, in order. Where did that stuff come from? How did that sun stand still for Joshua? And on that very same date, China says, we had total darkness that day. What was that about? Okay. A second witness. God always has that second witness. Guys, I love you. Believe the Bible. Will you believe the Bible? Will you believe God's man? Will you believe who God sends? Hear his word, the descendant of Moses. And just like his great, great, great granddaddy, he'll be doing the same thing. He's the leader of the pack. We're all going with him. Aren't you thankful? Aren't you thankful for whatever happens to Sean Mitchell on this side until the rapture happens to us? He's represented in us, with us, you know, from the Lord. Amen. God bless you, Alicia. Amen. Yes, it helped. Good. That's what we want to do in this Bible study is help you out, get you have a clear understanding. And guys, you will be so cleared in your thinking, in your mind, in your timeline and doctrine if you will just know the Bible codes. Okay? It'll get everything straight. And you people that are kind of on the line and kind of borderline, you better get that straight quick, dude. You better become a believer, a believer, a believer in everything God and what he's up to right now. If you've been shown this Bible code, you've been introduced to this Bible code, you better fall in love with it, believe every bit of it, and believe Sean Mitchell is the representative, and he's going to be one of the two witnesses, and you're going to be seeing him right next to God, and he'll be seated next to him for those 40 days, probably, according to, you know, what happened in the past. We all get called up to the mountain, and 40 days later, Moses comes back down. Everybody cueing? Yawn? Heather says, man, I've talked to so many pastors who won't even preach Revelation right now. Me too, sister. Me too. Wicked. Wicked. The only book that promises a blessing, and they stay away from the blessing, and it says there will be a curse if you change it, and these guys have all changed it. They have changed what the book of Revelation says. They're in danger of something. Okay? Alicia says, my kids want to read Revelation at our Bible time. They know it's all about to happen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God for you godly parents. Praise God for you godly parents. What is a godly parent? Somebody who's perfect? No, somebody who's saved. And you want to lead your children to Jesus. And you know that he's perfect. So his word is that. Jesus is his word. So you teach him the word. And he is the revelation. Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. How else are you going to learn Jesus Christ unless you know revelation? Amen. That's awesome, guys. That's awesome. Hey, I love you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we do love you. We praise you for your goodness to us and your blessings to us. And uh, I pray for Garrus. Thank you for, for just giving him a sign of your presence and your promise of that rapture. And I pray you'll bless him as the devil comes at him head on, that you'll just give him grace and mercy to, to handle it and deal and walk. I pray for the rest of our people. I pray for George, that you'll just keep blessing him, Lindy and her family. I thank you for blessing them here uh, with that new job and everything. What a what a great God you are. I pray for Vondo and his family. I pray for everybody who's commenting here tonight that you will bless us as we walk. Bless our friend who the devil has, has totally taken over his mind and he's wanting to be freed from that. We pray you'll bless him. Give him grace and mercy in that. Give him a quick release, Lord. Help him to believe to the fullest extent. And we just praise you for that. And I praise praise you and we worship you and can't wait to, to see your face. I pray for Sean. You'll bless him. I pray against all these devils of hell who are trying to slow him down and come against him and all of us. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, Amen guys. I love you dearly. Um, Heather says, praise God. The kids want the truth. Be a kid, guys. Unless you become like one of these kids, you're not going to be allowed into the kingdom of heaven. Now, what does that mean? I think that has everything to do with rewards. I think being tenderhearted and following the Lord Jesus after you've been saved has everything to do with kingdom rewards and your rulership on earth during the thousand years. Everybody gets to go to heaven, but I don't think everybody gets to rule the way God intended for them to rule. And Satan doesn't want you to rule. He wants you, don't you come back here and rule me, my people. He wants to steal your crowns, steal your rewards. Don't let him do that. You be faithful. 
Okay? You be faithful. And, uh, boy, I had something I wanted to say, and I just can't think of it. Oh, tomorrow, by God's grace, tomorrow morning, we'll see you all at Bible study. All right? I love you. God bless.